Oh, bro, bro, bro. Gotta see this. We gotta see this one. Have a look at this. The Complete Strength Iceberg. Released by the bad guy. We already watched um, the fitness iceberg explained by the bad guy. It's a four months, a four years, what the fuck, a four months old video. We react to that in the Sunday documentary reaction where we watch every Sunday a documentary about fitness, about martial arts, about all these kind of things related. And when you when it comes to the strength iceberg, I need to see it because we know if you know me, I'm a athletic coach at the national. Um, performance center for kickboxing here in switzerland i'm studying sports science i'm into this kind of shit and i know already this year that does he i know already this story because the man lost his wife and he promised her to win the fucking olympics and this lift if you've seen this on social media you gotta be hyped up the fuck <laughs> let's fucking go bro <sighs> I'm probably, probably gonna double the leg by this way. I'm sorry. Get us something to drink, get us something to eat, man. We're gonna be digging deep today. By the way, huh? 40 grams of protein, huh? This, this. Bro, I, I almost started crying when i watched this really it is so emotional that's so damn crazy really i watched titanic man it's nothing dry like sahara but this story man oh oh man strength is something everyone has been fascinated by at one point. larry wheels yeah, yeah it's a fucking killer bro. that left here at some point thought about bodybuilders would you see hack and schmidt yeah that most people can relate to but if that body weight they left oh what the fuck let's go history there has been several Player. documented and undocumented feats of strength that display the woman of steel of okay in this video i'll be so, going uh, over the complete the shaolin monks oh, oh, oh bro 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 incredible figures and some lesser known stuff power left to call hopefully blow your mind but if you're not familiar with the iceberg video formats let me briefly explain what it is about no. so to start we have this picture of an iceberg where we place topics we want to cover and the most well-known information myths or stories or so what a bit right, let's go. topic is at the top of the iceberg and the deeper down we go the more weird obscure and unknown the topics get now if you didn't understand that everything will become clear as we go along and this video took a long time to make and if you want to show any kind of appreciation leaving a like and even a comment yeah please linking you the video down below the youtube algorithm but go give it a view video, also get there your popcorn ready because we're about and to leave it a like also there leave a comment man strength iceberg enjoy Please, I want to see more of these videos. Okay, we're starting off slight. Strongman. At the very tip of the iceberg, we have the sport that most people relate to absolute strength, being a strongman. The sport of strongman basically takes on a bunch of different events in a single competition, where each placing at the event gives out points. And I mean, it is kind of obscure that we, we, here, we are in the safe space, right? You and me, my friend. We know this shit. We know strongman. But if you go to the general public and ask them, what does a strongman do? Oh, they're strong men. And then you ask them, what disciplines do they have? Uh, I don't know. Do they lift heavy things? Huh? I mean, that's so crazy, bro. We're like living in a total yeah, different the world. The end wins the competition. The events range anywhere from heavy compounds like deadlifts, squats, and overhead presses to more practical lifts and movements like farmer carries, different loading events, and most famously being the... Yeah, I mean, practical, the yes. Of the competition. Back Although in the old days, maybe. Large strongman but nowadays, being, every single depending on where we leave. There is a clear consensus as to when strongman became an official sport. All we know is that it started with circus freaks and now it's a massive show for competitors from all over the world to train specifically to become good at a massive array of events. More on this later. General question. What would you say? Who are stronger? Strongman or powerlifters? Open for debate. Let me know in the comments. As it's often perceived as the pinnacle of human strength, 
The world's strongest man competition is the most prestigious contest in all of strongman that is held each year in order to crown yeah, force the hammer. best strongman throughout a series of events and qualifying rounds. The contest was first held in 1977 at the Universal Studios in California, and since strongman wasn't considered much of a sport at the time, a bunch of different athletes were invited to compete, ranging from football players to bodybuilders, weightlifters, and powerlifters. But nowadays, but you have to top, qualify bro. in order to compete at the world's strongest man competition by either earning points through other competitions or by being a former winner. The country with the most victories is currently the United States, although a certain country sits in a rather unexpected Yeah, have a place. look at Sadruna Saviskas, man. That man's crazy from Lithuania. It's dominating the last couple of years in powerlifting eh, and power powerlifting is perhaps and strong, man. most trained for sports in the And he's also mayor. What the fuck? The sport <laughs> consists of three primary compounds being the squat, bench press and deadlift in that said order. Powerlifting is divided into several federations that have specific rules on how to perform. Yeah, the IPF probably and the biggest what equipment one. is allowed in competition on top of yeah, how they execute no drug gear. testing protocols. The so-called gold standard is the International Powerlifting Federation, yeah. the IPF. IPF which currently hosts the powerlifting world championships every year and is actively trying to make powerlifting an olympic sport the sport also has weight classes awesome. for both genders because why this is important they, uh, we have the same thing going on in switzerland with kickboxing because when it becomes olympic you get funded by the government here in switzerland is swiss olympic we are swiss olympic partner but you can then raise up in the different stages of where you are in the olympic like category in your country and in switzerland kickboxing is in category four this comes with x amount of money that is funded to us to because we are the national performance center we are trying to get the kickboxers to the world championships and make them win there if they win now in this year and we have a couple of people i also trained one of them in strength and conditioning or am, i am training one of them i'm a friend salif dallo uh, from lausanne uh, for the um, championship in uh, portugal in i think november it's coming when <clears throat> you rise up to the next stage to stage three you get more funded so you can have better trainers better equipment you can have more training classes you can have better individual training that is why they want to make it into the Olympics, because it's about the bus, it's about the money. It's ranging from 59 to 120 kilo plus for men and 47 to 84 kilo plus for women. Although some federations also have different weight classes. Finally, powerlifting is divided into categories called equipped and raw lifting, where in equipped you get to use wraps and specific suits to help you lift more weight, while in raw you're just allowed to use the basics of a belt, sleeves and wrist wraps. I mean, morale is kind of the cool thing, right? Weightlifting is probably the oldest of the competitive strength sports, showing up as early as ancient Greece. However, and I swear to have the best squats. Day, consisting of the I mean, Max Lang, for example, German weightlifter, his squat is like phenomenal, like phenomenal. Or Lee Sung, being from China with a technical or Korea, I can't remember his name, uh, his, uh, his country. Weight classes, although these have changed quite a lot these last couple of decades. Bro, the first the lift everyone performs is the snatch, which states that the bar has to move from the floor and overhead with fully extended arms in yeah. one fluent movement while the clean and jerk allows for two movements, which is usually to first get the bar on your shoulders before pressing mm, the bar on your head. Yeah. In contrast to powerlifting, weightlifting has been a major sport at the Olympic Games for a long time, but it's currently yeah. in a situation where it might get taken off the program because of issues with the IOC, WADA, and corruption in the International Weightlifting Federation. Mm. More on this later. Okay. Some music, yeah. The half -ton deadlift is perhaps the most iconic lift of the century. Although in recent times there have been a handful of people trying to break this amazing milestone, some of whom yeah, one, have or the, one or the other the actually did. The most iconic lift was performed yeah. in 2016 during the Deadlift World Championships. Where the I mean, strongest imagine what or what did this to Eddie Hall's career, and he knew this, and I watched a documentary about him. And I strongly suggest you do that yourself. There's a strongman documentary documenting Eddie Hall, uh, Brian Shaw, Sadrunas Saviskas, and I think uh, two other people showing like daily, day, uh, daily life of a strongman. And 
it talks also about like his deadlift and that's wow that's where he almost lost his wife because of this lifters in the world were invited to attend but the how Hathcock it skyrocketed his career Richard and oh. at the time the world record was held by british eddie hall at 463 kilos or around 1021 pounds that he pulled the year before and as such he made the bold claim that the next year he would perform a 500 kilo deadlift which and was the did. biggest jump that the record had seen by quite some margin. And after training religiously for one year while using every trick in the book and bulking up to a solid 430 pounds body weight, Eddie went for the 500 kilos on his third deadlift attempt on the competition day and he made history. It would take another four years before the record would be broken by Icelandic competitor Hafdur Björnsson during a live stream event hosted by the world's ultimate strongman and judged by former world's strongest man winner Magnus Ver Magnusson. Although this lift has caused some controversy in the strength world as it wasn't part of a larger competition because of the ongoing pandemic at the time. However, the 500 kilo barrier still remains to be one of the toughest strength feats in the modern world and maybe we'll see someone else break through it soon enough. There was a Polish fella, Christoph, Christoph something, not myself, <laughs> but there was a Polish dude who did it, but it was also out of competition. So there's a debate about where, whether it uh, counts or not. Clarence Kennedy. A lot of you already know who Clarence Kennedy is and what mm -hmm. makes him special in the world of weightlifting and strength sports. Clarence That's something new enough for me. made a name for himself as a social media personality on YouTube and Instagram by showcasing his incredible strength and athleticism. But what makes Clarence so incredible is that despite being stronger than almost any other weightlifter, he can also do class, cool stuff. He hasn't competed since 2013. Today, he boasts an incredible 190 kilo snatch, a 225 kilo clean and jerk, a 106 kilo paused squat without any knee sleeves, belt, etc., a 200 kg paused bench, and a 340 kilo deadlift just hit my 110 while this week, bro. slightly less than 100 kilos for the most part. And with that, he may be one of the strongest hobby lifters to ever exist, although he may have even heavier lifts hidden away on his Patreon and unlisted videos on YouTube. Or on OnlyFans. Who knows? <laughs> I'm not only... Yeah! <laughs> Yes, Vladimir let's fucking go! is a Ukrainian social media influencer <laughs> and prankster who recently so went good. viral on TikTok and YouTube Shorts. It doesn't even look strong! It doesn't even look like he has ever lifted, bro! Anatoly cleaner gym pranks where he dressed up as a cleaner or maintenance man and asked some gym goers if he can respectively clean their lifting Sorry, sorry, can I clean here? Can I clean here? <laughs> And in some of his videos, he seems to be doing world-class lifts without any warm-ups or lifting equipment. However, despite I'm sure he Vladimir warms up being somehow. an incredibly strong guy, it has been speculated that some of his pranks as Anatoly have been faked using fake weights. Arm wrestling is exactly what the name suggests. A sport where people arm wrestle to see who has the strongest arms. The rules only state that you must grab the opponent's hand while making sure your elbow is always in contact with the table and whoever can push the opponent's hand onto the table first. Mm -hmm. Larry now, Wheels. Almost all of us have at some point attempted to arm wrestle somebody else. That's either guy. at a bar, at a school, or yeah, literally sure. anywhere. Which is just called casual arm wrestling. My girlfriend wants to always arm wrestle me. Wrestling, competitors use a table specifically designed to arm wrestle without destroying their elbows in the process. And in competition, as long as you don't lift your elbow off the table, it's almost anything goes. And there are a couple of different known moves that people tend to use. The top roll, the hook, and also the press. All of which have their own subcategories of technique adapted to each arm wrestler's strength and weaknesses. In recent times, the competitive side of arm wrestling has started to gain quite a large audience through YouTube channels such as Arm Wrestling TV and also the wacky and wonderful personalities and controversies <laughs> of the sport. More on this later. Talking about his Larry Wheels steroid is abuse. the most recognizable figure in the strength world today, and he has sprouted a massive social media following across multiple platforms where he showcases his incredible strength and physique. Although Larry seemingly does everything from bodybuilding to arm wrestling, Larry started out as a competitive powerlifter, and at one point he That's held so powerlifting world records across multiple weight classes at a very young age. However, more recently yeah. he has been trying to scale back his PED 
usage and drop down in weight yeah. in order to become healthier. Although he is still pushing crazy numbers in the gym and is actively training for arm wrestling, amongst other things. Over from a modern day strength athlete to an old timer, Eugene Sandow is mostly known as the father of modern bodybuilding and the figurehead of the trophy received when winning the Mr. Olympia competition. What most people don't know, however, is that Sandow was a strength athlete for most of his life, training under German strongman Ludwig Dullacher while competing in strongman and wrestling competitions. Sandow also performed circuits acts of strength all over Britain in the 1890s, but he soon figured that the audience were more impressed by his physique than his actual athletic capabilities, which led to him becoming the first ever modern day bodybuilder. If the world's strongest man competition is best to that is finding the strongest man on the planet, then surely whoever won the most titles would be the strongest man in history, right? Mariusz Pucjanowski from Poland holds the record of winning the world's strongest man Look at this man. I mean, he's not fat. Like, he's like shredded. Times, while a whopping four men have managed to win the competition four separate times. However, when discussing who was really the greatest strongman ever, his name rarely ever gets mentioned. That is because during the era when Pucjanovski was super dominant, a split between the World's Strongest Man competition and the International Federation of Strength Athletes caused some competitors, of which whom were Lithuanian Sajuna Savikas, who had placed second three years in a row, to boycott the World's Strongest Man competition for a few years leaving a somewhat watered-down range of competitors. And after his mm. successful strongman career, Puchinovsky later went on to become a semi-successful MMA fighter and is pretty well known in his home country of Poland. More on this later. <laughs> You're nice. Why not? Why not? If you have followed my channel for a while, you're also probably familiar with fellow fitness YouTuber and former competitive uh, bodybuilder sure. Greg Doucette. And if you've followed him for a while, you'd realize that on top of his bodybuilding career, he has also participated in strength sports, specifically powerlifting, where he actually held a world record for both the bench press and total in the WPC Federation. However, something that oh. you may not have known is that he also holds a deadlift world record for reps. In 2015, okay. Greg tried to break the Guinness world record for the most weight lifted in the sumo deadlift in one minute, where he successfully did 50 reps with 405 pounds, totaling over 20,000 pounds lifted in one minute. So despite screaming like a parrot from Aladdin, he was also that, a pretty well, strong that guy. That guy was sore the next day, I swear. Three. Layer two, okay. <clears throat> Milo of Croton is the tale of a young man from yeah, Africa, I've heard of that. who grew up alongside a calf. Heard As of a that, youngster, Milo was able to lift this calf above his head, so he continued lifting the calf every day above his head and carry him around for four years until the calf had matured into a fully grown bull. And this is often claimed to be the first semi-documented example of progressive overload being used <laughs> in the ancient times. Nice one. Love it. Well, it's true, Very few men Lloyd. throughout history have been called the world's strongest man without actually winning the world's strongest man competition. Paul Anderson was one of those people. Standing at 5 foot 10 and weighing over 350 pounds, American weightlifter Paul Anderson has put his name on some of the craziest strength feats known to man. For one, he was a two-time national champion and also a world champion weightlifter during the 1950s, and he won his gold medal at the 1956 Melbourne Olympics while suffering from a cold with a temperature of over 40 degrees celsius. He's also displayed some crazy unofficial lifts outside of competition such as a 1200 pound squat, a 628 pound bench and a 820 pound deadlift in training. And although Paul died what the in 1994, his legacy still affects strongman and weightlifting communities today and some of his crazy feats still remain unrivaled to this very day. Speaking of characters who were once believed to have been the world's strongest, French-Canadian strongman Louis Cyr is often referred to as the strongest man who ever lived. Cyr was a professional strongman and performer a full era before Paul Anderson, and he was born in 1863, and therefore very little credible information about him actually exists today. In his heyday, Cyr was rumored to have performed a 2-metric-ton backlift, a 
500 pound one finger lift and crushing Eugene Sandow's own single arm press record with a 273 pound dumbbell. Zier was also a big believer in the principles of progressive overload displayed by Milo of Croton. And as such, he wanted to replicate his feet by carrying a calf every day until it became a bull. However, the calf supposedly bolted off one day and kicked the then 12 year old Zier in the back, which led to him carrying a sack of grain, which he would carry for a quarter mile every day instead of the calf, to which of course he would add weight. At his biggest, Sear was in excess of 300 pounds while standing at only 5 foot 8, making him a rather dense individual and in 2013, a movie was made in his honor. I probably should see the movie. Oh, okay, Steffi Cohen, we all know. The strength world is usually very male dominated and female athletes often do not get the desired recognition in sports like powerlifting and strongman. However, a woman who has put the That's mark on the strength her. world is none other than Dr. Steffi Cohen, who at her best managed to squat and deadlift over four times her own body weight in competition. But she displayed even crazier lifts in training and at certain events, and over time she has broken over 25 different strength sport related records, making her one of the greatest strength athletes to ever live. Thomas Inch Dumbbell. <laughs> Thomas Inch Dumbbell is a 172 pound dumbbell which is almost impossible to lift because of its two and a half thick rotating handle. Although Thomas Inch himself yeah, you was see able social to media lift posts or social media videos no about this. Win hundred dollars and when you can lift this. With one hand. Even in modern times this strength feat has become very difficult to replicate. However, rumors and allegations have had it that the original Inch Dumbbell had a hole placed in the middle of the handle, for which Thomas Inch would use a nail to stop it from spinning when he lifted the dumbbell. Although this has never been confirmed. Yeah, I'm sure that happens. C.T. Fletcher has become a household name in the fitness and strength community in recent times because of his motivational speeches and incredible showmanship. But C.T. in his prime was also one of the strongest benchers that the world has ever seen. His best bench press in competition as a drug tested athlete was 650 pounds at the Muscle Beach Venice bench press competition in 1996. Which at the time I have my problems with pounds. pounds behind the world record. At around the same time, 294 the kilograms, world record, setting it at 650 pounds, pounds or just over 100 kilos, which stood up until just a couple of years ago. After retiring as a strength athlete, CT now holds multiple street curl competitions every year in hopes of reviving the sport. More on this later. Strongest grip. Okay. When you think of the guy with the strongest oh, your yeah. mind probably travels to guys like Mark Felix who holds the Hercules hold world record. But throughout the history of strongmen, a certain Norwegian man has claimed the unofficial title of the world's strongest grip, namely Odd Haugen, who at the time of making this video is 73 years old and still going strong. Not only has old he man's strength, the world's strongest man but old man's strength is but he holds records such developed as in the youth to ever lift the Millennium Dumbbell and he also holds the record for most most reps done with the Thomas Inch dumbbell being 63 reps in 10 minutes. Alongside an array of other grip strength feats that outdo some of the world's strongest men even today. This, this is the story the that I told portion of the Beijing in the Olympics beginning. In 2008, Russian Evgeny Chyshchev was one of the favorites to winning the men's super heavyweight division after winning silver at the world championships one year prior, just behind Latvian Skarbatis. However, at the European Championships just one month earlier, German Matthias Steiner had made headlines placing second behind the Russian Chyshchev, who was now a contender for an Olympic medal. Just one year before, Steiner's wife had tragically passed away in a car accident and he wanted to win a medal in her honor. After starting off strong with two decent attempts at the snatch, Steiner unfortunately failed his third attempt with 207 kilos, putting him in a fourth place spot before beginning the clean and jerk event. But even though the clean and jerk was his strong suit, he failed his first attempt with 246 kilos because he was still focused on his failed snatch attempt from earlier. But after receiving loads of encouragement from his coaches, he went up to 248 kilos in hopes you of getting see it in the medal ice, I swear. On it. And after securing himself a medal, his competitors started feeling the pressure piling on, and after Latvian Skarbatis failed his final attempt, 
with Russian Chischev in the lead. Steiner had to push an astounding 258 kilos overhead in order to secure the gold medal. And after another chat with his coach, Steiner went back to the stage with a clear mindset that this was his only chance to succeed. Lo and behold, he overcame the tremendous mental barrier and he won the gold medal, which he later received alongside a picture of his wife sharing the podium with him. Westside Barbell so is a legendary <laughs> gym for strength athletes and has in total created over 140 <laughs> different world records in powerlifting with its incredible members. Yeah, we did it. We did a um, video about Westside Barbell as well. So special is not only the incredible <laughs> athletes who train there, but also the sheer camaraderie between lifters who all train for free and earn their membership by showcasing their strengths on the platform. The founder of Westside Barbell, Louis Simmons, unfortunately passed away in March of yeah. 2022, leaving so Sadly, bro, sadly. Rest in peace, the, community. the gym is still open and still carries on the traditions it always has. There we could have gone deeper, really. There's, there's a lot of more stuff to tell In about. In the arm wrestling community, Schoolboy is one of the largest promoters of the sport, and a character who became well known over social media by being incredibly strong despite appearing just like a regular kid. At least at the time he went viral. Alexander Betsyasikov, going by his real name, first made his appearance on the YouTube channel Arm Wrestling TV, where he challenged people to beat him in arm wrestling, everything ranging from regular people to bodybuilders, strength athletes, and even world class arm wrestlers. However, standing at a massive 6 foot 5 and weighing close to 300 pounds, he is definitely a force to be reckoned with and has a bright future ahead of him in the sport of arm wrestling. The heaviest ever documented strict curl in competition is currently held by both American Leroy Walker and Russian Nizami Tagiev at 114 kilos. However, the heaviest curls caught on camera with semi-decent form is probably held by former World's Strongest Man winner Magnus Samuelsson, who curled 140 kilos for four reps. What's that in the water in the northern, in the northern countries, like Norway, Iceland, what's in the water there? There is actual training footage of Samuelsson hitting three plates, making him one of the strongest curlers in history. However, he never competed in a strict curl competition, so we don't exactly know how well his training would carry over to a more strict competition rule set. IOC. Olympic weightlifting is one of the most recognizable Olympic I sports. I swear they're all geared. They're the all juiced, bro. All juiced. Modern day Olympic Games held in 1896. However, weightlifting has also had one of the largest rates of athletes getting caught using performance-enhancing drugs. Yeah. And in recent times, discussions have been yeah, now, are you even surprised, bro? Not, the International Weightlifting Federation, the IWF, has knowingly held back doping controls, faked samples, and helped cover up for athletes who had originally tested positive for banned substances. More recently, the IWF has been under investigation for corruption, which at some point resulted in weightlifting being taken off the Olympic summer program, forcing the IWF to swap out their president and several members of their committee in 2020. In 2022, a new president was elected, although weightlifting is now in the red whether or not they'll be able to compete in the 2028 Olympics, as supposed decades of corruption has emerged over time. Many more athletes have now been banned from competing because of the ties to corruption and recent emerging positive doping tests. Although investigations are still ongoing, the IWF sure has a big job to do if they want to get back on the program in 2028. I'm working very hard with my executive board to keep weightlifting in Olympic program. Ooh. The Vikings are known for their incredible physical strength and brutality, which helped to make them feared across Europe over a thousand years ago. Some of their incredible strength achievements have stood their ground for centuries, However, in 2015, one of the most famous Viking strength records was broken by none other than modern-day Viking and strongman Haftor Julius Bjornsson. 
who during a strongman competition managed to lift a 650 kilogram log on his back while walking five impressive steps. According to the legend, a man named Orm Sturulfsson managed to walk three steps with that same log over a thousand years ago after having 50 men help carry the log to his shoulders. According to that same legend, Orm I, managed to break his- I don't care about 500 kilogram deadlift. This with this story behind? Oh. The shit I wanted to do. Oh, shit. During the lift, oh. and he was never the same after. <laughs> Although when Haftor did it, he celebrated and proclaimed that nothing could break him. The Icelanders are truly insane when it comes to strength and will Yeah, there is something in water or in the snow. On. Some very brave person in the crowd has actually called him an Eskimo. And he's heard that remark all right. I'm not an Eskimo, I'm a Viking! <laughs> When most people hear about the strongest professional bodybuilder, their mind instantly travels towards a time yeah. Mr. Olympia, Ronnie Coleman, who, although he never competed in powerlifting. You know, that's the thing, that's the difference between bodybuilding and sports that are strength related or where it is actually about strength, like um, powerlifting, weightlifting, uh, and so on. Because bodybuilding is more of a show of big muscles it's more a presentation well sure you need to lift heavy weights for as long as possible for or for as many reps as possible that is true but it's not per se about the weights you have been lifting it's more about how much muscle can you put on a human body and this changes the training methodology quite drastically but people don't think it's for the general population so lift heavy circles making body big nah that's a little nuance <laughs> while in his bodybuilding prime just a little years, bit still has some incredible gym lifts like his iconic 800 pound squat and deadlift doubles and although ronnie is very yeah. likely the strongest mr olympia winner the strongest IFBB pro bodybuilder to ever live in terms of his accomplishment in other strength sports is world record holding powerlifter Stan Efferding, who competed yeah, as a bodybuilder a in the early 2010s. Although Stan doesn't have the most impressive competitive history as a bodybuilder, he still holds the SPF total world record in the 270 pound weight class in knee wraps with a 2300 Without straps, bro. Total. Oh. Brad Castleberry fake weights, okay? Brad Castleberry has on multiple occasions claimed that his world record breaking lifts were real. Anything ranging from benching 7 plates to squatting 11 plates. He's done it all. However, he hasn't competed in powerlifting since 2007, and his gym lifts have never actually been verified. Furthermore, the plates that he always used when doing those incredible lifts never really matched the plates found anywhere else in the gym and has since been rather silent after being called out by some of the strongest men on the planet for using fake weights. <laughs> okay, let's go deep. Let's go deep. Hope I know some of the shit, man. Kyriakos briefly <coughs> has become no! somewhat of a <laughs> YouTube <laughs> fitness phenomenon for his incredible unconventional lifts and crazy all-round strength. The man also boosts some crazy mobility on top of his already <laughs> but massive great. frame. I mean, but he's crazy strong. What most people don't know is that Kyriakos Kapakulak used to be a competitive weightlifter for Greece. After starting to train with weights and kickboxing at age 12, Grizzly spent his teenage years getting as strong as possible until he eventually landed a spot on the Greek national weightlifting team where he would get up to a solid 180 kg snatch and a 220 kg clean and jerk at the age of only 23. At the time, his PRs in the powerlifts were, according to himself, a 370 kg squat, a 330 kilo deadlift and a 250 kilo uh, that the wooden count kilo front squat which oops knee which honestly would put him up there with one of the heaviest super totals of all time with 2977 pounds however after getting injured repeatedly grizzly would stop training specifically for weightlifting and focus more on so-called functional movements and he would start doing those freaky unconventional lifts that we now see on his channel <laughs> 
throughout the history of the world's strongest man, no, French, the United no. States holds the, the friendliest, most strongest motherfucker on However, the freaking planet. However, in second place, you find a country that you might not have guessed immediately. The land of the Vikings, Iceland, have a total of nine wins despite only having a population of 370,000, compared to what the US has around thousand times more people. As such, Iceland is also the country with the highest density of strongman competitors in the world, and many speculate yeah, that the reason behind all this is probably because, because the Viking it. genetics were only the strongest and fittest men of the older eras actually survived, which helped carry on better genetics for strength. The Icelandic diet is also under investigation as one of the causes to its inhabitants being incredibly strong, as it contains more protein than a regular western diet, and they also tend to consume large amounts of fish. Yes, but I don't, I don't buy this shit because when you are a strength athlete, you are going to get enough protein because you know about it. Maybe this has to do with epigenetics, what your parents ate, how your grandparents ate. Maybe this has an impact. I could imagine this. Being able to lift your own body weight is a sensation most people <laughs> will actually never feel, as most people don't even train. Being able no. to lift two times your body weight in any exercise is a pretty decent sign of strength. And That's where I am. Body weight a little bit over. You're already an advanced level powerlifter. At four times body weight, you're a freak. The first person to ever hit a five times body weight deadlift was American powerlifter Lamar Gant, who in 1985 lifted 300 kilos at the Flint Olympian Games while only weighing 60 kilos himself. And yes, Lamar lifted those 300 kilos in competition with a conventional stance for you elitists. Not only is this today <laughs> one of the craziest feats of strength in powerlifting, it. but Lamar was also known for having idiopathic scoliosis, which some could say actually helped him in his powerlifting career. The thing is that, that a diagnosis. Uh, C -bomb said that um, C -bomb said that sumo deadlifting is cheating. Social media then that opened the door for a huge discussion, and then Jeff Nipper made a video about it why it is actually in fact not cheating, showing all the biomechanics about it, that everything or both of the things conventional and sumo have their own advantage and disadvantages, and I swear I feel just more comfortable lifting. Sumo than conventional. Good at Maybe because of my height and the length of my, my legs. Georg Karl Julius, George also known as George Hockenschmidt, is one of the most influential characters in the <clears> modern day <throat> gym culture, as he was the inventor of both the flat barbell bench press and the hack squats, which most people use in their regular training. George was born in Russia in 1878, and he later became the first world heavyweight champion in wrestling, where he would also go on to invent the move that we call the air was also an absolute unit of a man who reportedly performed a 335 pound clean and jerk in a time where nobody even knew what a barbell was. George was <laughs> a pioneer of fitness at the time and a man who has helped shape the gym community into what we have today. Because my audience is 25% American, I won't only talk about real football, which you guys call soccer, but I will also talk about American football. The title of the world's strongest football player may be given to English player Adebayo Akinfenwa, who although he didn't play much at the highest level, his strength stats in the popular video game FIFA were always the highest of any player, which also managed to create him a cult following and he was featured in the videos of YouTubers like KSI and Joe Weller. Although there isn't much footage of him showcasing his actual strength, he did bench press 105 kilos for 15 reps on video, which is pretty decent for a striker. Although his supposed match yeah, I mean, he plays was football, 180 right. kilos, which is 306 pounds. Mind. Now on to the strongest American football player, which is a topic under some debate whether or not you should use the standards of the NFL Combine or just go by pure gym lifts. In any case, the strongest American football player who ever played in the NFL the is Americans probably four Everything is a big event there, that's Allen, so cool, man. We in Europe, we could just be behind on this. We are advanced. However, Compared to America, I would say in a lot of other things, exactly but this shit, I mean, just max college football, brah, like this. it's crazy. Not even our national teams have that big of a show. Regardless, he probably still is one of, if not the strongest professional American football player <clears throat> of all time.
The Raw Bench Press World Record, regardless of federation, is currently held by Julius Maddox at 355 kilos, which is around 783 pounds. And although Julius has done slightly more in training with a 360 kilo bench, there is one man who has actually surpassed that, albeit also in the gym. In February of 2022, Iranian powerlifter Daniel Samani oh, managed yeah, yeah, yeah. a solid 804 pound bench press, being the first person to ever break the 800 pound barrier. And leading up to it, Daniel had been pushing these crazy numbers every 364 week, kilograms leading up to something. For all you although normal people a lot of out people there, believe Samani's weights are fake. Nobody is doubting that this man is in 14, 15, 16, 17. Yeah. <laughs> while was the strongest bencher to ever walk the face of the earth. And maybe one day we will see him do those exact lifts in competition. Tom Platz. Ah, oh, fuck this Tom man. Is what mostly known he for his squatted. achievements in professional bodybuilding and his insane style of training where he pushes yeah. every set to absolute failure and beyond. What a lot of people don't know, however, is that Tom used to be incredibly strong at doing AMRAPs, meaning as many reps as possible, specifically for hey, wait. squats. As his much as possible. His ability to grind reps was showcased during an event hosted by former world's strongest man Bill Kassmeyer where Platz squatted 525 pounds for a solid 23 reps, way past parallel depth, while weighing just below 200 pounds himself. Yeah, I mean, he always had ass to grass. That's 238 kilograms, by the way. Most attempts have fallen short, showing that Tom Platz was probably one of the best squatters of all time. He was the quad father, really, the quad father. That's Tom Platz. Let it roll, baby, let it roll. He's not really finished. Ah, oh, man. Well, there was one or two coming. Katrin Brumbach, who would later be renamed to Katie Sandvina, was an Austrian-born circus oh, look, my girlfriend. who lived in the 1800s and early to mid-1900s. Standing at an Amazonian 6 foot 1 and weighing 210 pounds, Katie was the biggest wow. of 14 children in her family of circus performers, and she would start participating in circus acts when she was only around 15 years old. Although she performed in various acts with her family, she had one specific act where her father would offer 100 marks to any man who could beat her in wrestling, of which nobody ever would. In 1902, when Katie was just 18 years old, she would outlift legendary Eugene Sandow in a clean and jerk competition, where she would get up an astounding 300 pounds overhead, while Eugene Sandow only managed to get that same weight up to his shoulders. Following this extreme display of strength, Katie would receive the nickname Sandvina, referring to her as the female version of Sandow. Over the years, she would perform a bunch of incredible strength feats, such as <laughs> holding back four horses and also bending steel bars. But most incredibly, her best official overhead lift in Olympic weightlifting competitions would stand at 297 pounds, a record which would not be beaten until 1987. After retiring from the strength acts, Sandvina would open up a small restaurant where she would occasionally perform some strength acts such as lifting her husband overhead. And in 1952, at age 67, she would pass away due to cancer, although the title of Woman of Steel remains in her name. That's what I'm familiar with. In actually China, did the Shaolin, Shaolin Kung Fu have become very popular for their incredible uh, Shaolin Kung Fu style called Hongar the Shaolin couple of years devote their entire life to researching creating and further developing Shaolin Kung Fu let's hear what he tells about that Chan Buddhism art and traditional Chinese medicine the reason why these monks have attracted much attention is because they tend to perform incredible feats of strength that are way out of the ordinary feats we see in strongman and powerlifting rather no. they do stuff like punching holes in trees using only their fingers tanking hits and kicks to the groin head and even torso without showing any sign of pain and they also do stuff like smashing rocks planks and even iron bars 
Supposedly, their incredible strength and durability come from repeatedly abusing their bodies by hitting hard surfaces and lots of isometric work such as sitting in the squat position for hours at a time. However, yeah, the they also dance. meditate and some even strength train like your fellow gym goers. You can find their temple at the top of Mount Sung where they receive food, a place to sleep and also a set of robes in exchange for devoting their entire lives to the Shaolin lifestyle. Oh, huh, rather quick. Okay. Hysterical strength is a term used to describe incredible strength acts in unlikely scenarios where people... Oh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah I know what this is. That's the same... In the documentary I told, uh, talked about uh, Eddie Hall, he also told that he worked with, not a psychiatrist, but like a mental coach, and... They also developed such a scenario and he didn't tell what the scenario was because it was very, very personal for him and it would only work once. Going in that dark place where, like he's going to explain, a mother, their kids are under a car, she can lift the car, although she couldn't lift like 60 kilogram deadlift uh, normally in the gym. That's when something that extreme happens that your body just doesn't know anymore that it's not strong or whatever and that's the historic strength that's that they that's really really the situation to interesting also for yeah. research for example, i think you've all heard tales of women lifting cars yeah. off their children or even husbands in extreme circumstances or even when strength athletes yeah. pass past a certain limit like what eddie hall did with his 500 kilo deadlift although the topic of hysterical strength has not yet been documented in the lab and is therefore not recognized by the scientist community there has been shown increases in strength following higher adrenaline production and supplementation which is what people believe is also the cause of hysterical strength i mean just because there isn't a study on something that doesn't mean it is not possible because, I mean, see it from the pr practical perspective. How would you do a study like this? I mean, you would need two groups, control group and the regular group. And one group needs to be in this scenario. And creating this scenario, how would you do this? I mean, practically, you can't just say, yeah, go lift and think about your children. That's not going to work. You need an extreme environment. And <laughs> human rights... Terms are like, yeah, you can't do this. You can't do this shit, right? And then you need a placebo group that f would think somehow they are in this kind of zone, but they aren't actually. And that's, yeah, more probably going to work. But I mean, then you need a certain amount of numbers of people to do this. So yeah. Additionally, I don't think we're going to see any studies, but maybe I'm going to be surprised. Muscle fibers are believed to never be fully activated to avoid bodily harm. But in settings of life... Ah, that's also something interesting. By the way, what he told now that not all muscle cells are innervated by the nervous system, that's actually true. And that's also the science or the art of getting stronger without getting bigger. Because, for example, in martial arts, you have weight limits for fighters. So, for example, fighter X is fighting in the 74 kilogram category. So, what I as coach need to do is to get him as strong as possible, but he needs to remain in the weight category that is going to fight. And I cannot, like, get him an ordinary strength program that's going to blow him up. He's going to eat more. It's going to blow up in weight, maybe like six, seven, eight kilograms off season. And then he needs to shred down. We're not Paddy Pimlet, right? That guy does is like two times a year or something. That This makes the cut even hard for the athlete. And the cut for a, for a fight is already pretty damn hard. And I'm not a fan of this, but it's like it is. And so what we do as strength coaches is we do certain protocols that... The, exactly this, what he talked about, is going to be more efficient. So the innovation of muscles. Because, as he told, not every muscle is innervated by the same number of nervous cells. So, for example, little complexer muscles, like, for example, fingers, they're pretty, pretty um, fragile and pretty, um, I don't have the word now, but compared to like something like the gluteus, like the ass muscle, it's more of a... Technician finger, gluteus is more like the clown or the troll, right? So 
what we can work on then when we go really heavy, when we have the basis for, uh, for strength, sports, so we have a good squat, we have good technique, good bench press, good deadlift, good overhead press, and a good back strength for rowing, we can then work on high rep ranges. So we talk about 90, 95% of our one rep max. For this to know, you need to have the basis, right? And then you would do something like, for example, a squat, three times squat with 85, 90, 95% of your one rep max. And then you would go directly into plyometrics, into plyometric jumping. And what you can do is then, because you lift that heavy, you are not going to get much bigger but you get faster and stronger because you're teaching your body how to innervate more muscle cells by the nervous system to make it more efficient and faster. So you have more muscle cells innervated and it's also innervated faster. This makes you stronger because the more muscle you can regenerate, or not regenerate, you can recruit during a lift is going to make you stronger. And this exactly is what we do when we, tell, when we talk about making people stronger without them getting too big. I mean, any sport that involves some sort of, like, think about the climbers. They have to pull their own body weight the whole time up. You cannot bull, make them bulk up. That's counterproductive for the sport. And this is why strength and conditioning is an art for itself. Because you need to understand or have a fundamental understanding of the sport that your athlete is doing. You cannot like copy this like template of a strength protocol that you hand out in social media. No, that's not going to work. Maybe you make a couple of bucks, but it's not going to work. That's why I also have a strength program that's, by the way, linked in the video description. But it's a basic program that will get you to that basic stage of strength and then after you did this you then need to go to a coach for example to myself or to your strength coach in your gym and tell them hey i have completed the basics now let's go further let's go beyond because then you need in the word individualistic training you need an individualistic approach to your needs it is believed that higher amounts of motor units are recruited, which also allows for higher force production. So in other words, yeah, basically what told strength it. is probably real, but not to that degree that you often hear about in tales and stories. There are several tales of hysterical strength, and it's honestly a very interesting topic that I would like to delve into for a video of its own. So if you want to see that, leave a comment and maybe we'll make an iceberg video for it. <laughs> Police officer Coleman. Ronnie Coleman is often referred to as the best bodybuilder to ever live, as he doesn't only hold the record for the most Olympia wins together with Lee Haney, but he's also arguably the strongest competitor in terms of his incredible physique and level of leanness, objectively speaking. And one of the reasons why Ronnie is held in such high regard as an athlete is because he also was incredibly strong. But a part of why he became so strong later in his career is that Ronnie used to also be a competitive powerlifter in the 90s. Ronnie competed at four different mm. competitions spread throughout 1991 I didn't know that. although he only competed with his deadlift in the Texas Deadlift Classic meet. His best lift in competition stands at 727.5 pounds or 330 kilos while weighing around 275 pounds himself. More on this competition later. Cyclists aren't usually known for their strength, but rather their endurance and ability to uphold high speeds on the bicycle for extremely long distances. However, in track cycling, there's more emphasis yeah, fatigue on resistance. And fatigue power resistance rather than is endurance. endurance. Which brings us to this incredible man, Robert Furstemann, who is a top level German track cyclist who in recent times have gone viral for his incredible leg development and strength. Although That's some, some juice that there, boy. Kilos for me like it, me like it. I could find shows Robert squatting 260 kilos for five reps which makes the 290 kilo claim quite believable. On top of all this, yeah, Robert only that's... weighs around 9. Look at this, he does the same as I told you before. He works in that rep range or a little bit outside of the rep range, but still in the strength zone for developing maximum strength. Because 
believe it or not, max strength is the mother of all of the strength subcategories. The kilos, which would put his lifts as a cyclist high up on the Reactive professional power, for his weight class. fast One power, endurance, he could everything. If he decided to train purely for powerlifting, but I personally believe his legs could do even better in bodybuilding. Ooh. Heaviest raw conventional deadlift. Okay, then we need to pull up the current calculator. World in the strongman deadlift, which allows straps and a deadlift suit, sits at 501 kilos by Icelandic Hafter Bjornsson in 2020. The heaviest deadlift without a suit or straps is held by another Icelandic giant, namely Benedict Magnusson, who still has the rather Magnusson. unofficial heaviest raw conventional deadlift at 460 kilos, which he hit back in 2011. Although Benny has pulled slightly more weight in strongman deadlift, bro, that was too easy, suit, too easy, bro, that was smooth. 460 kilo pull what the is fuck? his most impressive, and arguably just as impressive as Eddie Hall's original 500 kilo deadlift, as Benny's pull happened much earlier in his career. And the reason why this record is so impressive is that there hasn't been a single instance of somebody breaking this record in 12 years despite incredible improvements on every other deadlift variation. For example, the strongman deadlift world record has increased by 58 kilos in that same time, and the all-time raw powerlifting record, regardless of stance, has gone up 27 kilos and is currently held by Dan Grigsby. Need to go to the story really quick. Came on to the Back in a couple of seconds. In the late 1970s, and is regarded as one of the best to ever compete, winning three titles back to back in 1980, 81, and 82, respectively. However, during that same time, the world's strongest man competition was in its developing stages, and there wasn't really such a thing as a strongman competitor yet, as most competitors were simply outcasts from other sports like powerlifting, bodybuilding, American football, and weightlifting. As such, there was no true way to qualify for the world's strongest man competition and competitors were only allowed to compete if they received invitations from the event organizers. After proving to be a very dominant competitor, Bill Kazmaier would not receive an invitation to compete in the 1983 world's strongest man competition despite being the reigning champion because the event organizers believed less people would watch if there was no real competition, as Kassmeyer was in a league of his own. This on top of that, Kassmeyer had already been a very polarizing personality and would often lash out at competitors and judges. Kass would not be allowed back in the competition again until 1988, a whopping six years without competing. Although he would not claim another World Strongest Man victory, he still placed second behind Icelandic Jun Paul Sigmarsson in 1988, showcasing that he probably would have also been very competitive in the years he was shut out. Therefore, a lot of people make the argument that Kazmaier could have likely been the greatest strongman to ever compete if he was actually allowed to. And this is just one of very many World Strongest Man controversies surrounding that time period. More on this later. Bibon was the name of an athlete who lived during the 6th century BC in ancient Greece in the town of Olympia. Bibon was supposedly a remarkable strength athlete and his only true claim to fame comes from the carvings found on a stone in the old Olympia town. Crota, the stone yeah. weighed a whopping 316 pounds and had the following written on the side. Bibon, son of Cola, has kilogram. lifted me overhead with one arm. However, historians have also translated this writing to throne, signifying that this man was indeed... I mean, just from the kilogram perspective, I mean, it's... Right? 143 kilograms. The people in uh, Strongman, like Eddie Hall and Brian Shaw, they lift, like, they lift 150 kilogram dumbbells overhead with an arm. That's possible, but the thing here is... How do you grip that shit? Indeed, <laughs> one of the strongest men of his era, although very little remains known about the character Bybon until today. The Dinny Stones are a pair of boulders with handles located in Scotland that weigh over 730 pounds combined. The stones were originally popularized by strongman Donald Dinny, who carried the stones across the width of a bridge in his area barehanded way back in 1860. Since then, the stones have primarily been used as a measure of grip strength, however, only six men throughout history has reportedly matched this incredible strength feat 
in the original Donald Dinny way, which was to carry the heaviest stone in front and the lightest stone behind your body. A couple of strongmen have in competition, however, walked much further using the farmer's walk method. Basement dweller. Basement dweller deadlifter was an unofficial title given to powerlifter and deadlifts. Oh no, isn't that the fucker that does like kickflips with like a thousand hanging dumbbells from somewhere around Spotty? Specialist Pete Rubish, who gained I a cult so. following in the early 2010s for his incredibly so. rough style of deadlifting, where he would rip seemingly any weight off the floor with incredible speed. Most of his famous PRs in the 8 to 900 pound range would be set in his basement with very loud music playing throughout the entire video, and it made the whole atmosphere incredibly tough to match. In his basement, Pete would perform world record level lifts in his team and early 20s, reaching a peak deadlift of 920 pounds while weighing only around 240. Pete is arguably one of the greatest deadlifters ever, and some oh, no, say that I the think holes he him. made in the cement of his basement are still present to this day, but Pete is now focusing on a much healthier approach to fitness and performance. Ah, that's not this one. Sorry! Speaking of crazy deadlifters, American powerlifter George Lehman used to hold the American raw deadlift record at 909.4 pounds while competing in the USPA back in 2015. However, George was not just a crazy deadlifter, but he was just an all-around incredibly strong guy and he was particularly known for his crazy AMRAPs, such as this video where he collaborated with Nick Wright and hit 800 pounds for 8 reps at only 23 years old. And before every lift, George would rip the weights off the floor just to set himself up. He also uh. pulled 700 pounds for 4 reps at 17, making him one of the strongest juniors awesome. and sub <laughs> right in the living room. of all time. Bro, let's go. Yes, come on. Yeah, give it. Fuck it, get it. Is it just me, or does somebody of you also find this like kind of sexy? Siemann de Rachman isn't a name even most powerlifters recognize, but he's arguably one of the strongest benchers to ever live. Rachman was born in Iran and lost sensation in his legs because of polio, which he contracted as a child. But that would not stop him from becoming the Paralympic bench press champion two times in 2012 and 16, alongside winning the world championship three times in the super heavyweight division. His best ever lift in competition was 310 kilos, which crazy. on its own is crazy impressive, but given that he did all of his lifts under the Olympic powerlifting rules makes it even more impressive, considering you're not allowed to actually bench unevenly or show any major signs of struggling when pressing. Outside of the gym, he has also performed an incredible 320 kilo bench, and he could probably do even more at a time when the bench press world record was 327.5 kilos. Unfortunately, Simon Ahmad would pass away in March of 2020, and if you want to know more about him, I made an entire separate video calling him the strongest man you've never heard of. So sad these things are always filmed with a potato. Most people who partake in arm wrestling competitions are usually very specifically trained. However, sometimes you just see somebody built like an absolute brick come in with insane strength and talent for such events. Enter oh, the don't get your tongue with this your guy teeth. grew up in the state of Georgia as a pig farmer where he would harvest and do lots of manual labor on a daily basis. And standing at over 2 meters tall and weighing over 400 pounds, although some believed Dean weighed closer to 600 pounds, he was no pushover. Just Whoa, one year after he started competing in 1977, Dean already claimed the world Freaking championship title and was a dominant figure in arm wrestling despite not being the most technically advanced athlete. And even though Dean was an absolute beast of a man, 
during a big one-on-one -on -one tournament against world champion Virgil Arciero in Las Vegas in 1978. One of Cleve's best friends was asked if he'd ever seen the man actually arm wrestle. No, but back in Pavo, there ain't no Cadillac in town that old Cleve can't pick up on the front end. During that match, Cleve Dean would end up winning, surprising the entire arm wrestling scene and claiming the very unofficial world best arm wrestler title, although a conspiracy still exists that Virgil and Cleve set up the event just to make spectators put money into bets and ultimately share the final winnings between each other. However, Cleve Dean would still dominate the arm wrestling scene throughout the 80s and prove that a simple pig farmer from Georgia could indeed be the very best, like no one ever was. KK Konstantin Konstantinov, or KK, was a Latvian-born powerlifter who managed to win both the Junior and Open Class WPC World Championships in the 140 kilo division throughout his career. However, KK was mostly known for his insane deadlift, specifically his rounded back technique and showmanship. Oh, in 2009, no. he would pull arguably one of the most impressive competition deadlifts of all time, hitting 426 kilos or 939 pounds without straps and a deadlift suit. But more impressively, also without a belt while weighing around 128 kilos. However, KK didn't earn enough money as a powerlifter alone, so he often opted for jobs as a bouncer and bodyguard, which unfortunately for him would lead to his demise. On October 28, 2018, KK would be pronounced dead at 40 years old without a specific cause being reported. To this day, a lot of people in the powerlifting community believe that he was involved with the mafia and shady businesses, although no proof ever came to light regarding those speculations. The thing about lifting uh, with around the back is you need to know how your spine is um, your spine is built up. You have the vertebrae, or I think it's called vertebrae in English, um, and they have the thing in between that I don't know in English now. And when you have like the force going this way, it is spread evenly. But as soon as you round your back like this, you squeeze one end. And then, Bandscheiben uh, the thing I also don't know in English, but then this creates much more force because it is on a tinier surface. And that's why we always tell people people have a neutral spine when deadlifting. You can do something like a Jefferson curl, which is, but then not a strength lift that is more of a stretch because there you have the extreme bend. You also have weight, but it's more of a stretch. It's never, 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 never a strength lift. That's why it's so dangerous to lift with around the back. Also, the butt wing is not that um, kind of a problem when squatting, when you don't have much weight. Because what happens is that your hips turn over at the bottom because you cannot, or you don't have either the proper stance for your anatomy, or you don't have the ankle flexibility to drive your toes far enough over your toe line that you can sit down. So what happens is the same. In the lowest position, your back starts to run because of the butt wing. This happens. And when you use heavy weights for squatting, then this can cause a problem in the lower back because this happens here. Whereas when you don't have a butt wing, you're like this. Hope you understand. <laughs> Big James Henderson is known as the second man to ever bench over 700 pounds raw, and the only man to ever do so while competing in a drug tested federation. Henderson was, in it's a lot of ways, bench. similar to bodybuilder Ronnie Coleman, as he would often spout lots of catchphrases during his training sessions. Henderson would also have an amazing professional career, winning the IPF World Bench Press Championship a total of five times back to back and his best recorded lift in competition, although footage is very scarce, was 711 pounds or 322.5 kilos, which he hit in a full competition in 1997. 
although he only loaded 60 kilos for his squat and deadlift because his goal was obviously to break that world record in the bench. Henderson has also claimed a 744 pound bench in the gym, although there is no footage to actually verify it. What's so crazy about Henderson is that he only started powerlifting in 1989 after one of his knees blew out during football practice, an event which helped morph him into one of the greatest benchers of all time. Yeah, thank you very much. Get out of the way. Yeah. 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 Come on. Easy going, brother. I know that was a yeah. good handoff there. Yeah. Thank you very much. Ooh. Thank you very much. Steinborn squat. The Today Steinborn we're digging deep. Is a circus lift that got its name from Henry Steinborn. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Milo Steinborn. The when you see it, then you know what it is. Squat, but that you start off with the bar in a vertical position at your side, and the goal is to get it onto your back before performing a squat, which means that you basically it's have the to same. lift the bar from a just in another direction. Position. Rumors say that Steinborn invented this way of squatting in order to popularize the lift, which he believed to be superior to other leg exercises in the early 1900s, as squat racks had not been introduced at the time. The official Steinborn squat world record is currently held by former World Strongest Man winner Martin Slesis at 565 pounds. Bud Jeffries was an all-round crazy strength athlete famous for his unconventional style of training in his backyard. Jeffries would perform all sorts of world-class lifts How does he get rid of those? Pin squats to overhead presses and even circus style and strongman lifts which would have challenged most seasoned professionals. Some of his craziest strength feats include a 1,000 pound squat from a bottom position, a 2,000 pound back lift for 13 reps, walking one mile with a self-made 300 pound vest on top of some incredible overhead presses. However, in January of 2022, during a light training session, Bud would suffer from a pulmonary embolism which caused him to collapse in his backyard with his wife present. Enough good things couldn't be said about this man as he was a family-oriented and major part of an anti-bullying and school program, and although he was not that big on social media, his impact on the strength community cannot be denied. Last layer. Mark Henry is known for being one of the strongest men to ever live, and he's often been given the title we of just the strongest man. We just have the strongest However, man that Mark ever Henry lived. Has not actually competed in the World's Strongest Man competition, but he did actually beat the reigning World's Strongest Man in a strongman competition. During the Arnold Strongman Classic in 2002, Mark Henry would enter the contest with one month of preparation time and challenged some of the strongest men in that contest, one of which was reigning World's Strongest Man winner Sven Kahn. Carlson of Norway. During the contest, Mark Henry would end Again, up getting 25 points from the four events, beating Carlson by two points and thus winning the show. As such, he is one of very few people to ever beat a reigning world's strongest man without actually claiming the title himself. <laughs> nice. The World's Strongest Man competition, and strongman in general, isn't exactly known for taking drug testing protocols too seriously, as they are not regulated under WADA, the same way that Olympic weightlifting and other sports are. However, in 2004, a Engineer very unlikely nutrition, scenario man. occurred following the competition. Third place finisher Mariusz Puczanowski, who still holds the record for the most wins, was disqualified after testing positive for a prohibited substance which was believed to be cocaine. However, this disqualification occurred after the podium ceremony and during which Puczanowski seemed to be rather happy with his placing. Some of you may have already heard of Tom Haviland from YouTube Shorts. But if you haven't, he is a 6 foot 8, nearly 400 pound Australian hybrid athlete who does all sorts of compounds alongside more explosive and athletic style movements and even long walks with added weight to his frame. Tom supposedly just lives alone on a mountain with his dog and he used to be a special forces soldier and saved up enough money to move away 
just to become an absolute unit. Some of his craziest strength feats that we have on footage include a 617 pound past bench, a 1000 pound deadlift, a 750 pound searcher squat, and strength of money mountain with lots of comp 8 nearly 400 from YouTube short. Some of you may have already heard of Tom Haviland from YouTube. Tom, Tom Haviland. And saved up enough money to move away just to become an absolute unit. Some of his craziest strength feats that we have on footage include a 617 pound Tom. bench, a 1000 pound deadlift, a 750 pound searcher squat, and some unconventional lifts like seal rows with over four plates aside, and a 456 pound overhead press. And the dude is just built like a bodybuilder despite being Need to follow that guy. Long. In recent times, he hasn't showcased his physique or even nice. face much. Nice, wow, bro. Of clothing, but based on some old jump is insane. Tom is still in incredible. Did you see this? Clothing, but based on some older footage, you can tell that Tom is still crazy strong. In recent times, he hasn't showcased his physique or even face much, as he always wears baggy sets of clothing. But jumping like this is footage, so cool, Tom so is still in cool. Shape. Tom also has a very special diet. Because it's something that you can relate instantly, you know how you jump, right? Going under a barbell is something that most people don't understand because they never did it. But jumping, like just jump, people instantly know what it is. and. That's why it's so impressive. Mostly of meat, eggs, vegetables, fruits, and <coughs> grains, prepared as if he's living alone in the mountains. Literally. As of right now, Tom hasn't explained his goals very thoroughly, although he used to claim that his goal was to reach 400 pounds body weight and to become as strong as humanly possible in the process. Maybe one day we'll be lucky enough to see this man compete, or at least collaborate with other strength athletes to truly showcase his strength. But until then, Tom Haviland remains a mystery to the strength world. That guy has some demons. Adrian Larson is the man responsible for developing one of the exercises most powerlifters use today called the Larson Press, which is basically a regular bench press where you just lift your feet up off the floor before initiating your first rep. Larson had an almost 20 year old powerlifting career where he mostly focused on the bench press, pushing as much as 585 pounds raw in competition while only weighing around 220 pounds himself, making him one of the best benchers to ever live. However, not much is known about Larson today other than he stopped competing in 2015 and he may be planning a comeback to the veteran division as we speak. Cannonball Catcher. I think this one I know as well. Cannonball Catcher is a title given to Danish strongman Jon Holtum who performed some incredible strength feats during the 1800s, most famous of which was his ability to catch a cannonball from a small firing cannon without any equipment at blank range. Supposedly, Holtzim worked heavy manual labor jobs as a shipwright in his early teens, which ultimately led to him becoming one of the strongest men in his era. Later in life, he would find the career as a strongman and circus performer in San Francisco, where he would also practice strength feats with American strongman performers. However, in 1870, Holtum would get the idea that quickly. the ultimate strength feat would be to catch a cannonball at blank range, a feat that nobody had ever thought of doing. As such, he practiced catching metal balls which were thrown at him from high speeds by other strongmen, until he finally one day wanted to attempt the real thing from a cannon. His first attempt, although successful in his own mind, ended with him losing three fingers, and upon catching the cannonball, he would throw it to the ground quickly because of its high temperature and smooth surface. In the aftermath of this incredible feat, the public would call it a fraud, claiming that the cannonball Holtum used was lighter than a regular ball, although nobody else would ever dare to recreate this challenge. Immediately, come on, okay. Re throw the first stone, do it then. ...of natural causes, despite many believing that his strength feats would have ended his life way sooner. That's uh, the Hercules gene is that's something like the Chinggis Khan gene. It's a genetic condition where some people are born with lower amounts of the hormone myostatin, which is a cytokine that is produced in the muscles and it binds to an active in receptor to activate a response from a different protein called a SMAD, which then inhibits a myoblast, which is what basically becomes muscle cells and muscle tissue. In other words, myostatin through some complicated processes actually inhibits cell muscle growth 
and thus having a deficiency of myostatin can cause somebody to build more muscle naturally and become stronger than the average person. In humans, this is rather rare as we haven't exactly been bred to have little myostatin, but in certain types of animals such as cattle, farmers have over time bred animals that no longer produce sufficient amount of myostatin, which in turn causes absurd levels of muscle mass to form around the animal. People such as Eddie Hall and Ronnie Coleman have claimed that they do probably have some sort of myostatin deficiency, which could have played a role in their successful careers. That was a free animation, right? Big C is the strongest. Sejunus Savickas is a uh. well-known character in the strongman scene, being a four-time world's strongest man, but he also holds the most number of second place finishes, as he's placed second on six different occasions throughout his competitive history. Comparatively, he has more podium placings than any other professional strongman athlete, considering he also won the Arnold Strongman Classic a total of eight times, and that alone could be an argument for why he is the best competitive strongman ever. However, yeah, what some might not know is that during the years where Marius Puchanowski was the reigning <laughs> champion, specifically from 2005 to 2008. The World's Strongest Man competition was challenged by a federation that they had previously been working alongside called the International Federation of Strength Athletes, who wanted to hold their own competitions, specifically one they called the Strongman World Championships, where athletes would be invited to compete. However, to keep their name and reputation, the World's Strongest Man competition did not allow competitors from the IFSA, and thus the athletes had to make a decision for themselves. Guys like Sidrunas, Derek Poundstone, Phil Fister, and Vasil Viraschuk would go to the IFSA, while guys like Puchanowski, Terry Hollins, and Jesse Marunde chose to stick with the world's strongest man, which in turn caused some years to be lacking in competitors. For those four years, Savickas was a huge favorite to win any competition he entered, and he would not yeah. compete at the world's strongest man and that thus miss so out strong, on four it's potential so extra great. titles, which would the really watch that documentary, please. After this video, watch this. Quite some margin. Look at the Uncrowned World's Strongest Man. Heading back into the World's Strongest Uncrowned. Man controversies, the 1990 competition is often called the biggest screw over of a strongman competition ever. <laughs> the final, you had on one side the famous strongman and three time champion Jun Paul Sigmarsson from Iceland, who was like the poster boy for the competition. And on the other side, you had the upcoming O.D. Wilson from the United States. Throughout the competition, Wilson had gained a pretty solid 5.5 point lead on the former champion, which meant that with one event standing, for Jun Paul Sigmarsson to win the competition, he would have to win the final event, while Wilson had to place last. However, heading into that final event, supposedly a last minute change was made to make the final event into a 200 meter sprint while carrying 220 pounds on their backs. A call which would put we the sprint, six foot seven, but with 200 pounds on the back. at a massive disadvantage, which eventually caused him to place last in the event, while Jun Paul Sigmarsson ended up winning and therefore winning the competition by half a point. Some claim that this win was gifted to Sigmarsson as he was the outward face of the competition and good for marketing, although no proof of the claims were ever found. Oh my put forward after the competition makes me kind of sad. this to say about himself and his competitor i feel i'm not taking anything away from saying but i feel within myself <coughs> myself that when it comes down to pure strength i am the strongest man on this planet i may not be able to run i may not to jump over a bus but I can move anything on this planet. And I'm coming back to this competition if I'm invited. And I promise you that I'll be standing in number one. Did he manage to do it? Oh, upset. You guys remember that powerlifting competition from Texas in 1994? If you yes, watch the video sir. on YouTube, before Ronnie Coleman walks onto the platform to deadlift, you see an older gentleman walking around the platform calling out as if he's hyping himself up with a massive 
485 pounds on the bar. This would be veteran powerlifter Roy Mason, who at the time was 76 years old and only weighed 151 pounds. Although the old man looked like he could barely walk, let alone lift, he pulled the 485 pounds, which would have been a world record if it was in an international competition. Roy Mason passed away in 2005 at age That motherfucker is stronger than myself. Participation in this meet will forever like go down three, as four times my age. Strength, especially for an old timer. God damn, I gotta hit the gym. Fuck yeah. Spoil Thank back. you all so yeah. much for watching. Let's go for it. This video took a long time to make, and it even took a couple of weeks just to write the script. So I hope you appreciate the effort Spoil by back. leaving a like and a comment <laughs> to boost that algorithm past the point of no return. And if you're point of no return. God damn it, Older. Back guy, go also to the video there. Become a member there. Become a member here on the channel because I have pretty a unique thing going on here on my channel. I'm giving away free ebooks. In the first here we have how to get a strong core, not with that 25 minute bullshit, uh, high intensity workouts. The second one is a cookbook with over 50 high protein, healthy recipes for your daily life that I do myself every day almost. And then on the 30, we have that base strength program that you can do to get that baseline of strength and athleticism and then go to a coach. Have a look at this. Link down below, link on my channel. And I would say we see you in the next time when we watch a documentary about fitness or martial arts. Anything else, go down in the comments.